So you want to make a 1.20.5 Minecraft server. Well, in this video, we're going to show you exactly how to do that, going over everything step by step. But the server that you make after this video, and we're going to cover everything in this video, including port forwarding, allowing your friends to join, it's all inclusive, so you found the right guide for that, but it's not going to be up all the time. It's only going to be up and running when your computer is up and running, so it's not a 24-7 server. On top of that, it's running on your own computer, meaning you're going to need a really good computer with a good CPU, a lot of RAM, things like that, in order to successfully run this server without lag and all of those potential issues. And in addition to all of that, it's also running on your own internet, meaning you're going to need good internet because all your friends are going to be connecting to you when they play on your server. And it means that you have the chance of being DDoSed and things like that. And anyone who actually gets the IP address to this server can DDoS you, which basically means hit your internet offline as well as figure out where you live down to your latitude and longitude coordinates. And so because of that, it's pretty important that you don't give this out to anyone other than your friends, which is why I keep mentioning that. But what if you want to start a Minecraft server and under five minutes, you don't have to do any port forwarding or any of the other stuff we're having to do in this video, and you just want to get it up and running quick and easy, while also having a 24-7 server if you want. You can make it public or private, the choice is up to you, and truthfully, you have all the control you want over your server. Well, that's where our company, Simple Game Hosting, comes in. You can go to the first link in the description down below, thebreakdown.xyz slash simple, to start a 24-hour DDoS-protected Minecraft server for you and your friends, where you can easily add mods, plugins, and mod packs. That stuff's not even covered in this video, and you can do all of that in just a few clicks at Simple Game Hosting. Plus, if you have any issues with your server along the way, there's expert live chat support there to help you out and fix any problems that you may run into with your server. Because at the end of the day, you may install a mod and it not work correctly, and that live chat support team is there to help fix that for you and figure out what the issue could potentially be. So go check out Simple Game Hosting at the first link in the description down below. The breakdown to XYZ slash simple and start your Minecraft server the simple way in just a few minutes and customize it however you want. Nevertheless, what if you don't want to use Simple Game Hosting? Well, that's where this video comes in and specifically our guides here and we're going to cover everything in this video But we do have a text guide which I understand a lot of people prefer text guides and that's why we have them This goes in depth vanilla per per all of that stuff that you need to know about making a server even port forwarding is covered here However, if you're following along with this guide, let's go ahead, scroll down, and click this Download Minecraft button. The reason we're doing that is because that's going to take us to the server download for Minecraft. As you can see, we have the download Minecraft underscore server 1.20.5.jar. This right here, this little green link that is Minecraft underscore server, is what we want to click to download the server.jar and... Once it's downloaded, as you can see, there it is, you may need to keep or save it. That's because this is a .jar file, but it's 100% safe to download because this is Minecraft.net. It's Minecraft's official website, so we want to make sure that we go here to download this, and like I said, 100% safe to do that. Nevertheless, we now want to go ahead and move on to getting things installed and working locally. But there is one change with Minecraft 1.20.5. And servers, and that's specifically this. Java 21 is required for 1.20.5 Minecraft Plus. Now, I'm doing this because it is part of you know this new update, and I'm going to be downloading this in this video. But you can also go through this guide that's more in depth that covers everything, just in case you don't already have it. And just so you know what it looks like if you don't have it, here is the server jar we just downloaded. If we double click on this, it just won't open, right? It's a jar file. It's even trying to open with Java, but it's not the correct version of Java. So the first things first we want to do is make sure that that version's uninstalled. So we can go to apps and features here and it will open up this. And in here, we can just simply search for Java and you want to uninstall this. We have development kit 17. We need 21. You may have 18, you may have 20, it may be a different version, but you need 21. So I'm going to go ahead and let this uninstall. So there we go. It is now uninstalled and we can download the correct version of Java. So that's going to be Java 21 here in the link in the description down below. It says download Java. We want to get this Java 21. Click download. It's going to take you here. Java 21 should automatically be selected up here at the top. And you want to download for Windows and we want to grab the x64 installer right here. When you click that, go ahead and click save if you need to. The download will begin. Probably won't need to keep or save it, but if you do, you're safe to do that. This is uh, the official Java download page. Nevertheless, it's not going to be in our downloads folder, and what we want to do is just double click on this. Once you double click on it, it will go ahead and open up this, which is the Java development kit. Installer, click next, click next again, and it will install. It's that easy, and it is required for Minecraft 1.20.5 servers. Again, that's the only reason I'm covering this, is it's brand new for this version. So even if you started a version or a server or installed mods in the past, you'll probably need to get Java. Now, in most cases, you should be good to go at this point because we uninstalled all the old versions of Java, but just in case, if you do have issues opening this jar file, what you'll do do is actually come here and run the jar fix. This is linked down below as well. It's super simple. You click download and you run a file. It's that easy and it takes all the jar files on your computer and links them to Java 21, making them work happily together.
together. But nevertheless, now we can go ahead and start this server. And to do that, we want to go ahead and create a new folder on our desktop. So let's go ahead and right click, create a new folder. We're going to call this Minecraft 1.20.5 server. And then we want to find that server jar that we downloaded. Now we know that's going to be in my downloads folder, but it's for you. It's wherever you download files to. And then drag and drop that from our downloads folder into this folder on our desktop here. Now you may not have dot jar at the end of this. If you want to, you can click view and click file name extensions, but it's not required. Then all you've got to do from here is double click on this server.jar. Now if it doesn't start, like I was you know mentioning before, like these files don't generate or you have any issues, you need to download Java 21. If you already downloaded Java 21, you need to download the jar fix. Once you do that, you'll be able to double click this server.jar and get these files and folders here. We want to specifically look at the eula.txt. Let's go ahead and open that with notepad. And then in the eula, assuming we agree to it, which we do, you can find it linked there. You want to change eula equals false to eula equals true, T-R-U-E, exactly like that. And then go ahead and click file, save. Now what we want to do is double click on that server.jar again and your Minecraft server will start. Now at this point you can join your server, but your friends cannot. Your friends cannot join this Minecraft server. If you get this pop-up by the way, you want to make sure that private and public networks are checked and click allow access. If your friends have trouble joining after we port forwarded and later on in the video, I'll mention it again, that might be why. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and get Minecraft open because you can join your server at this point and it's important that we go ahead and test it, make sure everything's working, things like that before we allow our friends and go through the, all the uh, port forwarding steps and everything. So let's go ahead and open up Minecraft. Cool little uh, loading screen here with 1.20.5. First time I've actually seen that. And then we can go ahead and launch into a vanilla Minecraft. I'll see you on the main menu. All right, here we are. Minecraft is open. Our server is started. And to connect to the server, you're the only person that can connect this way. But what we want to do is go to multiplayer, click proceed here, and then we can add a server. We're going to name this local connection. And that's why you're the only person that can join this server. Only people local to your connection can join this way. And specifically, only you use using the computer that is hosting the server can join the server this way. For the server address, we're going to use localhost as the IP. Localhost, all one word, all connected like that. Click done, and after a few seconds, it will resolve, and there it is. There is the server. We double click on it. We'll see us join in on the left-hand side, and boom, we are now on this Minecraft server. Things are looking good, and um, yeah, the server is online. We can join it. But what if you want your friends to be able to join your server? I mean, that's why you make a Minecraft server anyway, right? So your friends can join your server. Well, let's go ahead and do it, and to do that, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect from the server here and quit out of Minecraft. We're also going to stop the server. To properly stop your Minecraft server, always come over here and in this text box, type stop and hit enter. That's going to close the server down properly, save the world, all of that stuff. Nevertheless, now we want to go ahead and open up command prompt. And that's because we want to use command prompt to find a few IP addresses that we'll use for the port forwarding process. I'm going to write these down in notepad, but you can write them down with a sticky note or any way that helps you keep track of all of these these files. So what we want to do is come over here into CMD and type IP config right like so and hit enter. And that's going to give us a list of different IP addresses. We're going to go ahead and go with the IPv4 address here. And that's going to be 192.168.1.2. And then we also want our default gateway, which in my case is going to be 192.168.1.1. .1 and you can see these here, IPv4 address and default gateway. Now I have two default gateways. I have one that's numbers and letters here and I have one that's just numbers. We just need the one that's numbers here. This bottom one, you don't need the one that's numbers and letters. So just get the one that's easy to type out if you will. Now, once we've got our IPv4 address and our default gateway, we can close out a command prompt because these are all that we need. Go ahead and copy that default gateway, right like so and then open up your browser. Then in a brand new tab, what we wanna do is type in that default gateway, right like so, and then hit enter. When you do, it's gonna open up a login box. This is your router login box, and what you use here is different than your router's password for like logging into Wi-Fi, and so we need to find your router's username and password. Luckily, we have this, an in-depth guide in the description down below on finding your router's username and password. Start with method one, scroll down all the way through method five and go through each method one by one. Most people find it by method three or four and sometimes you do have to contact your ISP, but very unoften. Usually by method three, you have logged into your router. Speaking of, I'm gonna go ahead and log into my router and I will meet you once I've done that. So here we are logged into my router. Now, your router probably looks completely different from mine and that's okay for two reasons. 
One, in the description down below, we have this, how to port forward on any router. And this video goes through all of the top routers that are out there today and how to port forward on each of them. Even if your specific router is not mentioned, it's worth uh, you know watching that video because it's probably going to pick up some terms and have some terms in it that might be relevant to your router. I'm also going to be giving you some terms and things in this video that you're watching in order to help you find port forwarding in your router. Now, port forwarding is most likely going to be located in the advanced tab, an admin tab, a port forwarding tab, an apps and gaming tab, a security tab, a admin tab, something like that, administration. It could also be in an internet tab, as well as in my case, it's in advanced, and then it's in advanced again, and then it's in port forwarding slash port triggering. It could also be called NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding, or NAT gaming, NAT gaming. Just click around your router until you see the option to add some sort of a port forward or C port forwarding. Here we are on mine, port forwarding. And then what I wanna do is go ahead and add a new port forward. Once I do that, it gives me this, which is basically where we can enter in all of our port forwarding information. Now, yours may look different, it probably does, but that's okay. And the service name or ID or name, just the identifier of what this is, is gonna be Minecraft server. This is just so you know what the port forward is for. It's not used for anything else. For the protocol, we wanna do TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, or the word both. It literally may be the word both. And if that's the case, that's okay. So go ahead and select both if that is the case. But I have this here. If there is ever reason you could select one of these, go ahead and do this twice. Once for TCP and once for UDP, but most likely you will be able to select both. For external port, internal port, first port, second port, for anything involving the word ports, P-O-R-T, you want to enter in 25565. So we have external ports, 25565. Internal port, hey, Nick said anytime you see the word port, go ahead and enter 25565. Well, 25565 because the word port is there. Now, the next thing we have is the internal IP address. You may instead have a drop down box of all the devices on your computer. If that's the case, that's okay too. But what we want to do is for our internal IP address or in that drop down box, we want to select the device that we're making the server on. For the internal IP address, this is going to be that IPv4 address we found earlier. So 192.168.1.2, in my case here, is what that would be. For you, it's going to be whatever your IP ad before address is or whatever you select in that big long list of drop downs. I actually have that here as well, all the devices on my network. But nonetheless, as you can see, 192.168.1.2 is what our internal IP address is. Now, in some cases, you're going to need your external or public IP. That's probably only about 10% of people who will need that for their port forward. But guess what? Every single person watching this video needs their public outside IP address because that's what your friends are going to use to join your server. So if you don't need that, you can go ahead and apply and save your port forward. And and then go to the description down below to here. This is what is my IP address. And all it's doing is taking your IP address and giving it back to you. Now, for me, you can only see 4.3 here because you can see all the data and information you can get from someone's IP address. I don't want to give that out on the internet and you shouldn't either, which is why this is meant for your friends, your family, people you would invite over to your house. So let's go ahead and click to copy this here. And then once we've done that, what we want to do is go back over if you need it in your port forward and enter it in. Make sure you apply, save your port forward, all of that stuff. And now we can go ahead and join our server. Now I'm going to go ahead and do that by launching the server here as well as launching Minecraft. You can also go ahead and send this IP address to your friends because at this point, once your server's online, they should be able to join the server. So here we are in the Minecraft main menu. And what we want to do is go ahead and click on multiplayer. Click proceed and then add a server here. Now I'm gonna name this public IP because we're gonna be using our public IP address to join this server and then paste your public IP here. Again, you can only see 4.3 at the end because you don't wanna give this out to anybody and everybody, but it does prove it's the same IP that we were using earlier. Now when we click done here, it's going to go ahead and resolve our public IP. Now I know that I can join by double clicking the public IP one here and it's gonna join me right on into the server. However, you may not be able to do that. And that's because some internet service providers simply just don't like that. They don't alike you connecting back to yourself via your public IP, which is what you're doing with this server here. So with that being said, if you can't join via your public IP, that's okay. You can always join via that local connection that we did earlier in the video. The only people that have to use your public IP are your friends. So what do you do if they can't join this server? Well, the first step is going to be checking what I mentioned earlier in the video, which is your Windows Defender firewall. Most likely, this is blocking your friends from joining the server. So go through this guide, allow Java through Windows Defender, then you're good to go. However, if you still have issues after doing this, it could be an antivirus, it could be a firewall, on your computer. It could be a firewall on your router, something like that that needs to be changed. 
We also have this guide, which is how to fix a broken Minecraft server. This doesn't go through just connection issues. It does cover those, but it covers everything that you might need to know with a broken Minecraft server. And occasionally, Minecraft servers will just break, and that's what this video is for. It's 21 minutes, but it's worth watching if you're going to be a Minecraft server admin. You want to have as much information as possible when it comes to fixing broken servers. On top of all of that, we do have a guide in the description down below on adding more RAM to your server. If you're noticing your server randomly crashing, things like that, it could be running out of RAM. And that's where this guide comes in. It shows you how to add more RAM to the server. All that stuff to where you can set a custom amount of RAM and launch the server consistently with that. But nevertheless, you now know how to make a Minecraft server, how to join it, and how to allow your friends to join it as well. I do want to mention that you don't need to port forward. You don't need to do anything complex at simple game hosting. It truly is the easiest way to make a Minecraft server. And like I said, if a Minecraft server does have issues, there's expert live chat support there to help you out with your simple game hosting server should you go that route. So I hope to see you at simple game hosting. Nevertheless, enjoy your Minecraft server. Enjoy playing Minecraft with your friends. It's one of the best ways to enjoy Minecraft in my opinion, and we'll see you in the next video. I'm out. Peace.